This is the chessboard. It has 64 alternating light and dark squares in eight rows of eight squares each. At the start of the game, both players should have a light colored square in the bottom right hand corner. Horizontal rows are called ranks. Vertical columns on the chessboard are called files. Rooks owe their name to their tower and castle-like look, which originates in the old tower-like seats on elephant pieces. The rook's starting positions are in the board's corners. The knight's starting positions are alongside the rooks. They're usually designed to look like horses because they can jump over pieces. The queen is the most powerful piece in the game. She is placed beside the king. Black queen on black, white queen on white. The king may not be the strongest, but he's definitely the game's most important piece. If his majesty gets checkmated, the game ends. The bishops start on the squares to the left and right of the royal couple. And just like a real bishop, this piece has a far-reaching influence. Pawns can be considered as the infantry of each chess army. Their places are on the second rank of each player, directly in front of the main pieces. These are the white and the black pawns. Each player starts with eight pawns, one on each square of the second rank. You can easily tell pawns from the other pieces. They're the smallest and the most numerous pieces on the board. They're also the weakest, but they can play a decisive role too. The pawn moves one square forward at a time, never backwards. An exception to this rule is the pawn's starting move, where it may move one or two squares forward. On all subsequent moves, the pawn may only move one square forward. Pawns cannot pass through other pieces. Here, the knight is blocking the pawn's path. The knight will have to be moved before the pawn can move. The pawn is the only piece that captures in a different way than he normally moves. He usually moves straight ahead, but captures one square diagonally. In the example, the white pawn can capture either black's pawn or knight. Despite their relative weakness and limited range, pawns still play an important strategic role. 
thanks to their large numbers and unique actions. If a pawn reaches the final rank, the last enemy horizontal row, he can be promoted to any other piece, but the powerful queen is usually chosen. En passant is the pawn's special way of capturing pieces. When an opponent's pawn moves up level with your own, your pawn can take that piece by moving diagonally in behind it. Now only one pawn may move two squares. Move that pawn. One of the white's pawns may capture the opponent's piece. Move that pawn. Opponent's pawn just moved two squares. Capture it with your pawn. These are the black and the white rooks. Each army has two rooks. Their starting positions are the corner squares of the board. The rook is a major piece, one of the strongest figures in the game. This is reflected by its tower-like appearance and its great strategic importance, comparable to a queen's. The reason why a rook is one of the major pieces is that it can move any number of squares vertically and horizontally. Two rooks, used cleverly, control many squares and can win a game for you. Despite its massive appearance, the rook cannot pass through other pieces. Our example shows pieces blocking the rook's path, an allied white and an opponent's black pawn. Here the rook can capture the black pawn. The rook is the most effective at the center of the field, or during the middle game or end game, when most of the pieces are already captured, and it can take advantage of its wide range of movement. The example shows a rook in a central position. From here it covers lots more squares than from its starting position. Move the white rook as far as possible. Capture the opponent's piece with the white rook.
These are the white and black bishops. Each army contains two bishops. One is placed between the king's knight and the king. The other between the queen's knight and the queen. The bishop isn't really a major piece. It's more a minor one. But it can have a lot of tactical value in certain game situations. One of the two bishops starts on a white square, while the other one is located on a black square. And they stay on these colors for the whole of the game. Each bishop moves diagonally, only along the squares of its starting color. The bishop must always stay on squares of the same color, and that is why it's a minor figure, as you'll soon find out if one of your bishops is captured and you only, only have one left. Very limited move. At the start of the game, the bishop's movement may be considerably hampered by enemy pawns or your own blocking its way. This is a huge disadvantage compared to a knight, which can jump over them. In this diagram, the bishop's path is blocked by an enemy pawn. Bishops do have their strong points, however. In an open endgame, two bishops can cover both wings of the board simultaneously or quickly move in behind your opponent's defensive line, constituting a long-term threat from behind. Move the white bishop as far as possible. Capture the opponent's piece with the white bishop. These are the white and the black knights. Each army starts with two knights, positioned between the bishops and the rooks. The knight is easy to recognize, for it usually looks like a horse. Its unique way of moving and huge offensive potential, especially during the opening moves, can be of great value to a player. Knight moves in the shape of an L in any direction. So it can move either two squares horizontally and one square vertically, or two squares vertically and one square horizontally.
In the diagram, the knight can move to any of the eight squares. Notice how the knight jumps from one color to a different one. Always black to white or white to black. Just like a real horse, the knight can jump over pieces. Our example shows that the direct route to the enemy pawn is blocked by friendly pieces, but the knight can still capture it. So, a knight can attack any other piece without risking a counter-attack by the same piece. And it can carry out a simultaneous attack, a fork, on more than one enemy piece as well. The knight is at its most powerful when positioned at the center of the board. It can cover eight squares from the board center and four squares from the board edge, but only two squares when it's in the corner. So always remember to get your knights right into the thick of the action, in the center. Move the white knight to any available square. Capture the opponent's piece with the white knight. These are the white and black queens. In her starting position, the queen is located beside the king in the center of the first rank. Usually, there's only one queen on each side. The exception occurs when a pawn's promoted, and this could, in theory, lead to nine queens being on the board. The queen can move further and more flexibly than any other piece, so she's considered to be the strongest piece in the whole game. Losing a queen is a real body blow. The queen always stands on the square of her own color. White queen, white square, black queen, black square. Remember, the queen is a fashionable lady. She dresses to match her shoes. Queen is the most powerful piece on the board. This is because she can control more squares than any other piece. Her Majesty can move any number of squares horizontally, vertically and diagonally in any direction, combining the moves of the Rook and the Bishop.
queen can't jump over a piece like the knight, so her path can still be blocked by other pieces, in spite of her superiority. In our example, the queen can simply remove the obstacle, the enemy bishop, by capturing him. The queen is most valuable in the second half of a game, when there are more open areas on the field and she can easily capture undefended pieces. Her range and flexibility also make her ideal for forking attacks, threatening two enemies at once. Move the white queen vertically. Move the White Queen diagonally. Capture the opponent's piece with the White Queen. This is His Majesty the King. Each army can have only one king. Placed beside his queen, the king's starting position is in the center of the first row. Although he's the most important piece in the whole game, the king is also the weakest piece as far as moving and capturing enemy pieces is concerned. A king can't be captured, but he must be defended at all costs, or the game is lost. If he's threatened by an opponent's piece, meaning you're in check, the king must move to a safe square, or another piece must protect the king by blocking the check. If there's no legal move left to save the king, the enemy has achieved a checkmate and has won the game. The king can move one square at a time in any direction, but he can't move to a square that's already occupied by a friendly piece. And he can't move to a square that's under threat from an opponent's piece. That would put him in check, or even checkmate. When an enemy piece is next to the king, he can defend himself by capturing it. But remember, he can't can't move to a square that's threatened by the enemy. In this example, the king can capture the pawn, but not the knight, which is protected by the rook. The king is rarely moved at the beginning of a game, apart from moving into a good defensive position. In the end game, you can bring your king more into play and use him in offensive maneuvers. Move the White King anywhere.
capture the opponent's piece with the white king. When His Majesty is threatened by an opponent's piece, he's in check. Here, the White King is being checked by the Black Vision. If your King is in check, you must get him out of check immediately. There are three ways of doing this. One, move him to a square not under attack by the enemy. Capture the piece that's threatening your king, but he's not allowed to place himself in check again when doing this. Three, move a piece between the king and the attacking piece to block the possible attack and end. If you can't make any of these three moves, your king is checkmated and the game is lost. In this example, the white king is in checkmate. You don't capture a king in the game of chess. You win the game by checkmating the opposing king, not capturing him. White King is checked. Escape the check any way possible. Check the Black King. Check the Black King. Protecting your king is your highest priority, so it's a good idea to get to get him to a well-protected place, especially at the beginning of a game. That's where a special move called castling comes into play, but remember that this move can only be performed once. Move the king two squares towards a rook. Then that rook jumps over the king onto the square beside his king. There, you've just castled. There are two kinds of castling. Castling kingside or short castling and castling queenside, long castling. The difference between the two is obvious. The rook in question either moves two or three squares. Castling moves the king to the corner, where he is less vulnerable and can be more easily protected from enemy attacks. It's a good strategy to castle around the beginning of the game, when the king really needs protection. And you'll also get your rook closer to the center of the board, where it's more useful. There 
are four rules governing castling. One, you can't castle if you've already moved the king or the rook. This rule applies even if the piece is moved and then returned to the starting square. Squares between the king and the rook must be empty. In our example, the king can't castle queenside because a knight is blocking the way between the king and the rook. However, the king may castle kingside. Three. Castling is impossible if the king has already been checked or castling would put him in check. In our example, the white king can't castle because if he did, he would be in check from the black bishop. Four, the king can't castle if he has to cross a square which is under attack by an enemy piece, meaning he would be in check for a moment. Castle the White King Queenside. Castle the White King Kingside. Castle the White King anywhere. 